Okay, general policies. Um, there are basically one, two, three, four, five, six policies um, uh, in this course. Uh, the first one relates to plagiarism. Um, and here I, of course, quote the student handbook um, defining what plagiarism is. Uh, plagiarism is using the, uh, someone else's work or ideas without giving that person credit. By doing this, a student is, in effect, claiming credit for someone else's thinking. Whether the stu student has read or heard the information used, the student must document the source of the information. When dealing with written sources, a clear distinction should be made between quotations and paraphrases. Uh, both direct quotations and paraphrases must be documented. Summaries as well, by the way, right? Um, even if a student rephrases, condenses, or selects from another person's work, the ideas are still the other person's and failure to give credit constitutes misrepresentations uh, of the student's actual work and plagiarism of another's ideas buying a paper or cutting, cutting and pasting from the internet without attribution and handing it in as one's own work is plagiarism. This is from the student handbook. You're responsible for this. Um, I'm a tough cop on it, right? Um, I've had a lot of problems with students attempting to, believe it or not, cheat their way through their ethics class and I won't stand for it. Um, so I've got a zero tolerance policy on the course. You do it, you fail the course. Right, um, so it doesn't even make cost-benefit analysis sense to even try. Right, so um, that's the course policy. You do it, you fail. Capiche. Right, but in addition to that, my contract with Oakland University stipulates that I am an adequate judge of the quality of your work, but when it comes to questions of authorship, I'm not an adequate judge. Right. That has to be determined by committee, right? And that committee is housed in the do Dean of Students office. So if I suspect plagiarism, I am obligated to pass it on to the Dean of Students office. I'm not even allowed to make the determination myself. Now when it gets passed on to the Dean of Students office, that's where big trouble can happen for the student in question. I don't do this lately, right? I have had to do it in the past a number of times, and I don't do it lightly. They could kick you out of school, they could suspend you, right? They could um, place you on academic probation, they could mandate all sorts of things, right? Another thing that they can do, and I've seen this happen one or two times, they can suspend you for the current semester. So you know how you plagiarized in that one course, but we're taking five courses, that wipes all of your grades for the semester. You know, so um, don't do it. Now, if you're saying to me that, oh, well, I, 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 I don't want to do it, but I don't know what it is, how do I avoid it? Well, the Kresge Library has a plagiarism tutorial, right? It's right on the course syllabus. Um, there's a link right there um, that you can follow right at the bottom of the page. It's an excellent tutorial, right, um, that will teach you not only when and under what circumstances that you can use sources, but how to properly reference them, when you need to properly reference them. And uh, it will teach you a citation style too, if you're unfamiliar with one of the standard citation style, styles, like APA, MLA, Chicago, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's, so don't do it. Hey, wait, I don't, know what it is, how do I avoid it? Well, here is a handy dandy link that you can follow in order to get some training. It takes about 40 minutes, right? So, um, that's the first thing, don't do it, right? Um, and this is why I hate the policy section, right? All of these policies are policies because I've had problems in the past, but I don't know you guys, right? You're fine people, I'm sure. Right, I'm sure we won't have any problems. Um, missed assignments. Right, um, I'm happy to work with you. I completely understand that life happens. Life happens to me all the time. Right, um, from my daughters get sick or need surgery to um, my wife's out of town and I wind up behind on things uh, to I get sick, etc., etc., etc. Right. 
cars break down, uh, dogs eat homework, that sort of thing. I completely understand that life happens. I will work with you if you work with me. Don't assume you have an extension that involves a discussion. So you need to email me, right? preferably before you miss a deadline or a due date, or within 12 hours of having missed it. Otherwise, I won't be able to offer an extension. That policy is there um, because I've had people come to me, like, let's say this is this is a January start. They they come to me in April and say, uh, I missed work in January. I'm going to make that up now, okay? No, not okay. Right? Because then you've had all of that extra time without even having a discussion, right? Um, to complete the assignment when, um, like for example, your other classmates have had to scramble and struggle to work and meet deadlines, right? So I'm, I'm going to be very, you'll find I'm extremely accommodating. If you talk to me, I will work with you and we will get you through this. I want you to succeed. We'll get you through this best. But you have to work with me. Right? And you cannot ignore the course all semester and accept, expect to pull it out in April. Right? So um, that's, that's, that's a policy. Right? Um, assignment submission. Your job is to get it to me. My job is to evaluate it and get it back to you. Right? Um, I say this because you're going to be uploading files to Moodle, so you've got to make sure that the file is actually uploaded to Moodle. <laughs> That's your responsibility. Right? I only grade what I get. Right? Um, it's also your responsibility to make sure that it's the right file that you've uploaded to Moodle. Right? Um, it's your responsibility to make sure it's not a corrupt file. Right? Or not a draft file. Right? So the completeness of your submission and the submitting of your submission is on you. Right? Um, so that's your responsibility. My responsibility is to assess grade and get it back to you. Right? So um, that, that is um, the deal. Right? If I don't have it, it's not there. Um, I've also already said a couple of words about email. Um, first off, I want you to email me using your Oakland University email address. That way it doesn't wind up in my spam filter and I don't have to go looking. That way also I can actually figure who you are and what section you're in. Right? Thirdly, um, it you know generates a certain conversation history. I, I want you to use your Oakland University email. I'm not going to guarantee that if you're using Hotmail or something along those lines, does anybody still use a Gmail or whatever? Um, that's not your institutional account. I, I can't guarantee I'm getting your emails, and I can't guarantee that I'll respond to them. Right. Um, so, Oakland University emails. The other thing is, um, it, we've developed some unrealistic sort of expectations with regard to turnaround for emails. Right. Um, people expect me to reply to emails within like a couple of hours and well sometimes that's possible it's frequently and most of the time not here's the thing i'm a part-time instructor here i devote an appropriate amount of time to engaging with the course and responding to emails and grading assignments and designing and structuring and recording these videos and uploading them and making sure my course is up to date, etc., etc. I, I, I devote an appropriate amount of time to that, but this is a part-time job and I have another job that I do on other days of the week, so it's not going to be an immediate turnaround on emails most of the time. If I'm able, I will. Secondly, I get a lot of emails because I teach these online courses. So there are some points in the semester where I could just spend 24 hours a day responding to emails and not catch up, right? Um, four days is an ex acceptable turnaround on an email. If you don't hear from me within four days, please feel free to email me again. The other thing, um, if I'm receiving a bunch of the same questions from students, 
I frequently send out a general email to everyone. I'm not, I'm, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just being efficient, right? Um, in trying to stay on top of, of, of the correspondence that are associated with these courses. So um, that, that, that will be um, the deal uh, with, with email. I'm going to fall behind, right? I can tell you that right now. I'm going to fall behind on emails, right? Um, I'm going to minimize that to the extent that I can, right? But um, I, I, you, 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 the, 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 there's life, right? There, there's so much to do that, you know, anyhow. Um, I, I'm going to treat you fairly, though, throughout the semester. And if you're communicating with me, I'll be communicating with you. So um, the discussion forums, um, you're going to be debating and engaging with one another about um, philosophers are great for this. We talk about all of those things that you're not supposed to talk about in polite conversation. Money, religion, um, ethics. It's, it, you, you, you are going to be annoyed or put on the spot or something with regard to issues that raise, are raised in this course, right? Now, where I draw the line with that, you're, you're expected to enter into these debates, you're expected to argue your conscience, right? But if I see any personal attacks or any derogatory comments about others, I'll remove them and issue some penalties, right? The idea is that we are to keep it classy on these forums. We are to engage with the, argu uh, the arguments, right? Not try to engage the person making the argument, right? So, right, that's, that's one thing. Two, the discussion forums are not private communication. This is, this is not Facebook that we're dealing with here. We're not tweeting at one another, right? This is, this is an instructional resource, so what I want you to do is stay on topic. The Socrates forum is going to be for Socrates, right? not for, hey, how was your weekend, right? So, right, um, it, it, if you want to do that, you'd hop on Instagram or Pinterest or Facebook or Twitter, right? If you want to do all of that, there's a whole sort of social media world out there for you, right? But these discussion forums are your rough workspace to figure out this material. Finally, extra credit? No. No, there's no time for it, right? Extra credit, it, well, it's extra, right? Um, I give you plenty of opportunity within the context of this course to maximize your grade. Um, and uh, in the next video, we're going to discuss um, what goes on with regard to the grades that you're going to get. Um, so um, th there will not be extra credit offered in this class. Okay, so um, now on to evaluation. Uh, so the first item in evaluation and um, largely the first thing you'll be engaging with are the discussion forums. There are going to be six for each of the theorists, like one for each of the theorists for a total of six. You're expected to enter into debates, ask questions, try to figure it out. Uh, the way I think of these courses as, is as though they are large reading groups, right? You have 35 people that are all concerned with figuring out this material along with you. So, right, you do your readings, you watch the videos, you engage with the forums, you discuss, you debate, you um, try to tease out the nuances. Each of these forums will have a prompt. That's the beginning of the discussion. I record uh, a brief video to go along with them as well that talks about um, the question that I've asked you and why I think it's an interesting question. I just try to get the ball rolling for you, but um, for the most part, I consider this your rough work area, right? So I, I, you will not see me engaging substantively. Um, correctively, I read each and every post, but um, it's this is your space, right? So if you're incredibly off track, or um, if uh, the, the, any of the violations of the content policy are occurring, you'll see me hop on there, 
all right? But otherwise, this is your space. Um, these forms also are a way for me to give you control of your grade for the entire semester. Um, they close right at the end of the semester. I think it was April 22nd, all right? Um, yeah, that's here somewhere. Uh, so right at the last moment of the class, you still have access to all of them. So that 10% of your grade is in your hands right until the end. The forms are great because you don't so much have to be right. You just need to demonstrate to me that you're engaging with the material in a thoughtful way. Right. Um, so uh, basically, um, uh, when you see one of these forms, um, you can either generate a new topic or uh, respond to other people's topics. Right. Um, I track both, both get you the grades, um, and uh, they won't be assessed until the end of the semester. If you're nervous, send me an email and I can do an early sort of mid-semester assessment for you um, as sort of a special thing. But, um, you know, it's for the most part, it's since these assignments are ongoing, uh, it's not until the end of the semester that you'll get a grade for this 10% of the course. Um, the idea is um, that uh, this, this is an instructional resource that will enhance your understanding um, of, uh, of the material. Right? Now, uh, when I turn to grading these, um, I've got basically three criteria right, that I use to grade, uh, grade them. They will be on each of the forums as they pop up. Um, I, I, I lay this out clearly in each of the forums. So. Um, uh, it, it, first, have you posted at least once for each topic? More is better. This is supposed to be an ongoing conversation between yourself and your classmates about the material, right? Um, but at least one post um, per topic is necessary here, right? Um, and by at least, I mean that's how you get a C. Right, so make make a couple of posts. Generally, a topic and a reply, or two or three replies, that sort of thing. Um, secondly, um, are the posts substantial? Do they demonstrate that you've thought about this material? Right. Um, uh, yeah, exactly. So, um, do do do. Uh, three are the posts timely. Right. I also look at when these posts come in. So while I say they're open um, throughout the semester and you've got access to them until the end, right? Well, here's the thing, right? Every semester I see some students right on the 22nd of April, right? The very last day doing all of their forum discussions. Now, that doesn't offer anybody else the opportunity to respond to you. Right? You've not enhanced the conversation about the material in any way if you've waited until the end. So it's best to be on top of these and timely with them. Right? Now, towards the end of the semester, if you're worried about your grade and you really want to ensure that you maximize that 10% of your grade, right? well, that is the time to supplement. Right? I, I will see and recognize and dole out some grades for the additional effort. Right, if that makes sense. Right, so that 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 is how I evaluate them. Right, um, the point of these forms, like I say in the syllabus, is to generate a study resource for everyone in the class that simultaneously uh, provides a practice area for uh, formulating and evaluating arguments and writing. This is a place to work out your ideas in an ongoing discussion with the rest of the class. This is your resource. While I do read every post, I usually leave the, uh, this as your discussion space and your study resource. I post myself really um, infrequently only to stimulate discussion or debate or correctively, right? like I say. So, um, if you're freaking out about these forums, contact me um, and I'll look at your posts and um, see, see about how you're doing and offer you suggestions for how to, um, how to enhance, right? But for the most part, like I say, this is your resource, right? Um, so that'll be the deal there, right? Uh, stay on top of it. And um, the, the other thing I'll say about the forums, you will find that some of my essay prompts are very similar to the forum discussions. Right? So 
Um, this will generate an additional sort of ideas for your essays as well, right? So this will give you the ability to dry run um, an interpretation of the material at hand, right? Now, um, the Moodle quizzes, um, uh, these, these are just short five question quizzes, right? They're mostly multiple choice or true and false, that sort of thing. Um, they're designed to see if you're paying attention, right? Um, they're designed to test whether you have carefully and um, sort of meticulously taken a look at this material, right? In an ongoing kind of manner, right? So. Uh, they will, uh, each of them will open uh, at the, uh, the, the, the beginning of um, the new section. So, so Socrates material pops up. Uh, as soon as you view that Socrates material, you'll have access to the Socrates quiz, right? Um, Etc. So too with Aristotle, so too with Kant and Mill and Nietzsche and Sartre, right? But you'll only have that, that, that short window of time Right, so each of these have specific deadlines, right? So which which I list um, on. The, so for example, uh, the Socrates uh, quiz will um, it become available on the twelfth of January, and you will have until the twenty fourth of January to do that quiz, right? Um, and so too for all of the others. Right, so um, that, that, that will be the deal for these quizzes here. Um, and, and they're not there to hurt anyone, right? Um, I try to ask questions about material that's either central or obvious, right? Um, in some cases, I'll ask you about a metaphor or an argument that one of the supplementary videos have discussed. Um, sometimes it's the textual material, that sort of thing. I just want to make sure that you are engaging with the material and that's what these are um, judging. Plus they provide you with a certain instant grade feedback as well, right? So um, that is the deal with the Moodle quizzes. Um, uh, the thing is, you've got to be within the due date for these two. If you miss a quiz, it's we're just on to the next quiz, right? Um, they're worth 5% of your final grade each, right? Um, so, uh, then finally the essay assignments. This is the backbone of the course, right? So, um, this course is divided into three sections with two theorists each, so a total of six theorists, right? Uh, each section will have a short essay assignment. Um, the essay is going to be 500 to 750 words. They're designed for you to be concise, offer an interpretation, a quick argument, an illustration of the theory, what have you. Right. Um, you will be given two prompts to choose from, so the first one will have a Socrates prompt and an Aristotle prompt. You can choose between them and uh, just address the one that you are engaging with. Right. Um, so if you choose Aristotle, you don't have to write a Socrates essay. If you choose Socrates, you don't have to write an Aristotle essay. Right. So um, it keeps your workload down, keeps my grading workload down as well, but it um, satisfies the writing intensity sort of portion of the class and gives you a chance to engage in a fairly substantial analysis of um, the material at hand, right? Um, so I expect you to draw on um, all of the resources that I've provided, um, my video lectures, uh, the supplemental stuff, um, the text that themselves, the forum discussions, etc, etc, right? Um, these are, uh, they're not research essays though, right? So if you're doing research to enhance your understanding, be very careful that you're properly referencing it using a recognized um, uh, reference style, APA, MLA, Chicago, right? Uh, these are also essays, they're not exam questions. So I want an introduction with a clear thesis statement, body paragraphs, and a conclusion, right? I'll provide you with more resources on that um, as well. 
Um, so uh, the essay prompts will be posted to Moodle at the end of each uh, section. I indicate the dates there. Um, you'll have a minimum of one week to um, engage with this material and craft your responses to the prompt. Um, your responses are submitted through Moodle and um, it's again I'm a tough cop on academic integrity so um, that's so basically how this is laid out is 10% for the forums 30% uh, for the Moodle quizzes that gets you to what 40% of the course and then three essays worth 20 each so that's 60% of the course right totals to 100 I do things on a points equals percentage sort of basis so you'll know right where you stand with each of these assignments um, and I've got great books set up to um, to give you an indication of where you stand in the class as well now um, given that these are writing assignments and there is no easy way to actually grade a writing assignment you actually have to read it through think about it offer commentary and that sort of thing it takes me a while um, to actually work through these and basically what I'm doing is I'm mining your responses to the essay prompts for anything that might be of value right I provide a generous read of your material and um, carefully consider how best to um, respond and assess your work right so um, it will take me probably about two weeks from when I get the last assignment in right so um, if there are extensions that will hold up grading that's that's just the way it is right um, so it's I, I don't release grades until I have my entire pile right uh, the Moodle quizzes you'll get your grade immediately and the discussion forums will be calculated at the end of the semester and like I say if you want feedback through the semester contact me I'll give you feedback um, for the most part, um, the, the material for this course is all just going, well, it's not for the most part, it's all going to be through Moodle. Um, my videos are on the long slide, um, and uh, you're going to have to brace yourself for that. Um, I am uh, sitting with uh, Microsoft Video Editor and trying to break them down because a couple of them are just monsters, right? There will be two-hour videos, right, um, that you will encounter in this course. Uh, the best thing to do um, if you just become exhausted uh, is uh, note that there is a pause button. Um, maybe even record the timestamp for when you paused and go back to it at a later date. Um, that, that might be the best way to uh, manage your time until I actually go through the lengthy process of editing these videos down into more manageable bytes. Right? Um, I am working on that, but that takes time. Right. Um, so um, hopefully by the end of the semester, the videos will be. But nonetheless, I'm pointing out that there's a pause button. So um, you can manage your time um, accordingly that way. Um, so everything's on Moodle. So it's your responsibility to regularly access Moodle. Um, I, I try to log on daily through the week uh, myself, but every second week you can expect um, new material posted to Moodle. As for the schedule, which is um, the fourth page of your syllabus, um, uh, there is uh, closed captioning available on YouTube videos, so if you require closed captioned uh, videos, you, you, that's there for you. Um, if you require additional um, sort of accommodation for the course, um, I give you that information on the course syllabus as well, right? So, um, and if you're having technical issues with Moodle, um, it's a, I, I've got a link um, to submitting a ticket or uh, the phone number of tech support on the third page of the course syllabus. Um, and uh, the fourth page of the syllabus, this is your tentative schedule. Um, print a copy, keep it handy, because this is how the course is going to unfold. All of your due dates, all of your assignments, all of, like, even reading week is on here. It's not reading week, it's winter recess. But nonetheless, um, I, I keep a copy of this just sitting right on my desk, so I know where I'm at at all times. So, um, that is there for your reference, and um, I think I can do this last thing very quickly. Um, 
The last page of the syllabus has a uh, percentage grade to letter grade um, conversion chart. Um, it, all the Office of the Registrar sees from me is letter grades. And um, interestingly, this is an old chart that I'm using here. There is actually absolutely no way to submit an A plus to Oakland University's Office of the Registrar. A is the highest grade that you can get. So if you get an A, you get an A, and anything over 86% is an A in the course. So familiarize yourself with that. Um, every semester I have students freaked out about their performance in the course, and every semester that's as a result of um, their not paying attention to the grading scale, right? Uh, this semester I've added um, a what your grade means section uh, to which describes what what what's what a letter grade actually means in this course, right? So a grade of A plus, for example, marks of 93 and higher are reserved for students where um, their work is of outstanding quality uh, that provides clear evidence of a rare talent for the subject and of an original and or incisive mind as reflected in their written work. That's all I ever see from you, it's your written work. Um, every semester I have people say that they're really, really trying. I, I, I don't have a rubric for try, I don't know how to evaluate it because I don't see it. All I see is what you submit to the course, right? So, um, so like A-range grades are of exceptional quality. You've exceeded all of the requirements of the assignment and I'm going to advise you to change your matter, major and pursue graduate studies. Um, grades of uh, A minus or A um, between 80 and 92 percent are awarded to students for excellent comprehensive accurate uh, accurate work in which um, evidence of a certain flair and uh, for and comprehension of the subject is clearly perceptible as ref uh, reflected in your written work right so that's that's what an A range grade means B range grades, on the other hand, um, uh, marks of 70 to 79 percent are awarded to students who have a sound grasp of the most, most important goals of the course and whose work may be described as careful, craftsmanlike, competent, and good without being distinguished in, in, as, as, um, in, as reflected in written work, right? If you do the assignments and meet the criteria without exceeding them. That's that's what a B range grade is. A C, C range grade um, are awarded to students who have an average comprehension uh, at competence which falls short of a standard of a B grade through incompleteness or inaccuracy. Their work may be described as adequate as reflected right, in the written work that I receive. D range grades, um, this, this is a barely satisfied the minimum requirements of the course, right? And um, a grade of D or 50, that, that, that means that the student failed, but there's good reason to give the student a bare pass, right? And anything less than 50% is an F, right? Um, and generally, this is as a result of um, either rants that have no sort of sort of engagement with the course material, um, the failure to submit assignments, incomplete assignments, etc, etc. What I'm saying is you really have to work to fail this course, right? Um, or you have to do absolutely no work if you're going to fail this course. Everyone should get a pretty decent grade if they do the work, but you also have to understand that A range grades are for exceptional work that exceeds the course expectations. Right? So it's going to be a lot of work to get an A in this class. It's going to be a lot of work to fail this class as well. Right? So. Um, yeah, that's that's going to be the deal there. Uh, if you have any questions about what you've just heard or what you've read in the course syllabus, please um, give me a call or give me a call, give me an email. Um, and uh, so what have we done? We've done a course overview.
policies and uh, assignments and grading. Right. Um, now, uh, what's posted to Moodle is some background. Excuse me, background material um, that will acquaint you with the project of philosophy um, and get you up to the historical context where Socrates is making his argument in the Apology. Um, you will, like I say, have to view this video and at least click once on the syllabus in order to open any of the other course material. Uh, so um, do that and um, it, it's, then you have access to the course. Right? Um, I'm looking forward to some really interesting discussions. I like this material and I like talking about it with students. So um, hopefully uh, if everybody does what they need to do for the semester, everything will go well and um, everyone will come to a satisfactory end. Right? Alrighty, um, have good days, one for each of you, uh, and um, yeah, I look forward to the semester.